Hello, and welcome to another podcast of the Culture Hour. My name is Shelley Smith, your hostess and the founder of Premier Rapport, where everything is workplace culture related. As I continue my story, my series on interviews with those that sent in some really great things they were doing during the crisis for a Forbes article that I've now submitted and will be coming out soon. I found some incredible people with some incredible stories and I just had to let them come on and share. And so today, without further ado, let me introduce you to Dr. Kyle Boggan. Did I say, I always have this thing with names and I think I literally open every podcast with, I have this thing with names. Um, all right, uh, Dr. Boggan is a general dentist and a speaker as well as a consultant on workplace culture. So absolutely love having you on today. So welcome. Thank um, you. He's the owner of a North, uh, let's see, North Orange Family Dentistry. Dr. Boggan has, uh, is earned his fellowship in the Academy of General Dentistry and his fellowship in the International College of Dentists. He's a member of the American Dental Association, the Ohio Dental Association, the International Dental Implant Association, and the American Academy of General Dentistry. He earned his Doctor of Dental Surgery degree from the Ohio State University. Graduate, graduating obviously with high honors and even in the marching band. My son, my youngest is in the marching band. Um, so I, I love and appreciate all of that energy as well. So welcome today. I appreciate you being on and I know the listeners and viewers will too. What did I not say in your bio intro about yourself and about your practice? Do tell us. Absolutely. You know, the, the, the main thing, and, and I think the, it's great to talk to other people that are, that are passionate about culture, is that that's been my passion from day one. You know, I'm a dentist, um, obviously, um, but, but something that I found grossly missing from my profession is, is that workplace culture piece. And so it's just great and refreshing to be able to come on and, and, and talk about that today. I, I love it. I have to admit, when I saw I was like a dentist, I said, ooh, I'm loving this. I'm loving this. So uh, curiosity has me before we go into some of the specific questions. What is it that's happened in your life and in your world that you you know that workplace culture is important? Yeah, you know, I've spent the early days of my career in dentistry working in various um, practice modalities for various practice owners. And one common theme I found that ran through a lot of that and really what, what turned my eyes to practice culture is the effect of, you know, disregarding practice culture on the employees themselves. You know, as, a, as an associate doctor in, in a practice, you're not an owner, you're not really an employee, you're in this weird gray zone. Mm -hmm. um, you get to hear both sides of things and, and the absence of somebody intentionally creating that culture and the toxicity that it brought to the workplace was something that I knew when I had my own practice that I just really didn't want to, to have fester. Yeah. Love that. So, you know, it is often our experiences that draw us into the shift of mindset. I know for myself, that is absolutely a part of my story of being a really highly engaged, uh, a part of the C-suite in a fast growing company, but then becoming incredibly disengaged and my entire world being shattered because the company wasn't thought, didn't do and think and believe what I thought the values were. And, and so that became my story too. So I definitely, you know, get that. So the article, let's, let's get into those questions. I had asked for you to weigh in on things around spending more during COVID. So many different uh, companies go with what they believe is the low hanging fruit. And oftentimes it is the impact of training development and the very things that allow the culture to remain strong. And you responded and said, no, we're leaning into our culture. We're spending more money on training and development. So why don't you tell us what you're doing and I want to hear why and maybe some lessons learned and some wins. Absolutely. So coming in, you know, on the, before COVID, you know, being someone that speaks on culture, we were a very team focused um, business, very team focused practice. When COVID hit, even our culture, the way it was, it was a shock. Um, you know, just the, you know, the, the furloughs and, and everything. So coming back into COVID, I knew that I had to reinvest in that culture to get us back to where we were. You know, even, even practices, you know, culture is a thing that, that happens, it's continual. It's not like you fix yeah. your culture 
and and it's okay i'm done you have to you have to you have to nurture that culture and and reinforce it and so coming back into covid really you know we spent time and money in two different ways uh one was really taking our team first culture and reinforcing the safety aspect both for our team and for our patients and the other was really a culture of communication uh, which has always been a value of ours uh, but really having to lean heavily into that um, and so from the safety aspect you know dentistry and a lot of professions are very focused on safety every day of the year uh, mm -hmm. and so that part you know we just kind of up the ante a bit and so you know spending in that area came in you know peace of mind for the staff is step one and so you know we talk about a healthcare facility and so in the beginning we invested in technologies that would prepare the building itself and so you know clogging the building making sure that it was safe from that regard on the staff side preparing the staff you know we basically threw out our operational manual and so the culture that that created the first you know how we how we did things how we operated because of the changes necessary with social distancing and, and various things we threw that out and so we came back together with a 50 page manual this is how this is what the new normal looks like um, and some of the spending that went into that was increased PPE to, as far as safety goes, you know, ways to treat the air in, in, the, in the facility, um, various things around that. And so really that's where we, we took our team first focus and in order to make, continue that thriving, we had to shift our focus to more of a safety aspect to make sure everyone felt safe at work. Yeah. Um, what are some the, of the things that you learned out of that that maybe were a surprise in some of the big wins? Yeah, so the biggest surprise to me, you know, obviously most of us out there haven't haven't navigated an economic downturn in a business before, you know, from a culture standpoint, from an operational standpoint, um, or at least one of this magnitude. And so, you know, part of me, you know, the, the culture creator in me was kind of leaned heavy on that, like that'll get us through, you know, our, our, um, our previous uh, aspects of culture. And what I found is that even though that was there, there was a rocky time. You know, that culture, even though we created the open lines of communication and everything that goes along with a healthy work environment, the staff still had reservations, fears, anxiety about coming back into a workplace when we were going to have to deal with this whole new, new global pandemic. Yeah. And so while, while I thought I could, the culture would just take care of it, and it kind of goes back to having to continually build and nurture culture, um, it didn't. And so we went through a little bit of a rough patch and had to kind of go back and say, okay, what, how did we build this to begin with? And kind of go back to the starting block and really work our way back through communication and, and everything to, to get us back to where we were. What did you change inside of the, the communication um, sphere? You've, you've mentioned that a few times. So is there some specific nuggets for people who are maybe also struggling still now? Yeah, and one thing, you know, I'm, I'm a person, I feel like a lot of leaders are that when, when you have um, a challenge come up, you kind of put your blinders on and you're like, I've got to fix this. Mm -hmm. uh, un, unknown to me, that was viewed as a communication shutdown. Um, okay. They couldn't approach me with things anymore. Um, and so really it was, you know, when you create, when you have this culture that you've worked so hard to create, you need to lean on your team in times of trouble and not try to take it all on yourself. And that, that allows those lines of communication to be open. Yeah, I completely agree. The clients that I work with that have gone into frozen mode, to your point, are, are the appearance of frozen mode because you feel like you're supposed to be as an owner, as a leader, as an executive, a one-stop shop, know all, almost like a robot of information that no matter what you bring to me, I can fix it. I'm a superhero. And we're human just like everybody else. And, um, you know, we have been caught in this whirlwind of stress, fear, and anxiety, just like everyone else. And to your point, if you've not leaned into shared leadership now and just asking your team what to do, what they think, what they feel, what they believe, how do we get around this and just be open and transparent and say, let's do this together. Let's try some things. Then you're not going to move back into uh, surviving out of surviving into thriving, you know, mode again. So it sounds like you've done some of those turns. What are some things that you're going to continue doing that you've learned out of this from a communicative standpoint anything that's continuing to move forward yeah you know i've i've in the very beginning um 
I opened up several modalities of communication for the staff. And so they could come to me personally. There was a weekly reporting mechanism where if they weren't comfortable coming to me, they could write things down and they'd have a way to submit that to me with their name. And so as the culture became stronger, I kind of leaned that out a little bit and, and took some of those away. And so now I'm re-implementing what I should have just left in place in the beginning and just giving, giving the team so many different options to, of connection with me as the owner that they'll find one that they're comfortable with. Yeah, sure. no, that's great. And I love that buffet of variety because we're all motivated and comfortable to your point, doing things in different ways. And so if we just lean into the one thing that works for us, we're more than often shutting other people down for that. So and other um, dental practices that are listening, other uh, CEOs and owners that are listening, what advice would you give them now or, or even to your, yourself <laughs> 90 to 120 days ago, what do we need to know from you? You know, the biggest piece of the pie, I think, in navigating anything that's unknown, and specifically COVID-19, is leaning into open lines of communication. And that goes both with teams and with your patients. You know, there's, you know we didn't talk about it earlier, there's a whole other set of anxiety on people re-entering businesses right now. Yeah. And so really, the only thing that will dispel or ease those concerns and that anxiety is really information and knowledge. And so from both aspects of business, really the first place to start and the first place I wish I would have just leaned into a little harder in the beginning is just making sure that those lines of communication stay open. That makes sense. And, and I'm glad that you brought up the, the patient perspective to, to your point or the customer perspective. I recently went back to my local dentist. I literally, I think it was when we shut down whatever the first week of March was, I had just had, uh, was in the middle of getting a crown. So I had the temporary crown put on. And so of course I couldn't go back. And yeah. so last week um, I went back and I have to say they did a good job of saying what to do, what I'm gonna experience when I get in and what was changed. And it did make me feel more comfortable. The other thing that I learned that they didn't talk about is that, um, and, and the whole time I was sitting in the chair, my mind was reeling, to be per perfectly honest, is because everything is metal there. And I recently learned because my son is in the Navy that, that uh, these, these viruses, not just COVID, but the viruses live on metal so much longer. And it was one of those, wow, I didn't know that. It certainly you know, made sense. And I think I had found this out maybe two days before my appointment. So I was sitting in the chair looking at all of the metal around me thinking, do they know what I know? And I was afraid to ask because they didn't want to know. But anyways, to your point, lean in and give, um, give your patients and your customers information as well. So I, I think that's definitely great advice to give us uh, peace of mind or as much peace of mind you know, as we can. So let me, before we, we begin to put a wrap on today, but I want to know how, again, a little bit more intrigued about you again as a practicing uh, dentist practice this this how you go out and do talks on workplace culture as well and consult on workplace culture so unpack that for us a little bit because I'm I'm continue to be intrigued by that yeah so you know like I said in the beginning it was amazing to me in my own experience and even as I've started doing this how how much it it's not even a, a talked about. It's like general business really has this figured out, I, I feel, or they're starting to. And it's just not even, uh, not even talked about in dentistry. And so obviously I'm a full-time practicing dentist. You know, I, I practice um, three, four days a week. And then so I've really, on, on, on the off days and, you know, everywhere in between, I really trying to spread the message that if you want to grow your business, if you want to scale your business, if you really want to make a difference in your community, it all starts with office culture. You know, so many people are so you know, we're trained, you know, P&L statement, profit and loss, you know, cut your margins, increase your profits. But really, if you fix your culture, all that will follow. And so that's the message I'm trying to spread. Man, a check is in the mail because you're, you're singing my tune. I always say there's every business has four, four either strengths, gaps, or weaknesses. And that is around our, our strategy, our execution, our cash, and our people. And for me, it's all in the people lane. Absolutely. When you, when you take care of and focus on that and know what right looks like, all that other stuff falls. Absolutely falls in place. So mm -hmm. I love that. Well, thank you so much for coming on today. 
We appreciate you. Give a shout out again to your practice specifically because I'm quite sure there are people in your area who are listening and need a dentist. Absolutely. So it's uh, North Orange Family Dentistry uh, and you can find us online at northorangefamilydentistry.com. But where in Ohio is that? What city is that? We're in Lewis Center, Ohio, which is just north of Columbus. There we go. Very good. Well, thank you so much for being on today. And for all of you tuning in, listening, commenting, sharing, we appreciate you. Uh, continue to, to be the sphere and the, the curator of workplace culture. If you didn't believe it, you probably wouldn't be listening. So I appreciate you tuning in. Again, my name is Shelley Smith. Culture isn't built in a day. Culture is built every single day. Be well and be safe out there.